point to multipoint and non-broadcast multi-access. Two new network types that we'll explore in this video. Welcome to the network trip. The next network type is point to multipoint. This is gonna have two different variants. The first one is by using broadcasts and the second one is in a non-broadcast environment. Let's start with the point to multipoint broadcast. This network type is going to treat the network as a collection of point to point links. I have this network, R3 is connected to that switch and then we have R7 and we have R8. So we're going to set the type point to multipoint. It's important to mention that this type of network is gonna use the hello messages to discover all the neighbors automatically. And then they will establish a full adjacency. After establishing the adjacency, point to multipoint is gonna send unicast packets. So let's go to the topology and let's configure R3. So I'm going to R3 is that guy here and I will add an interface template Ether2 if we are going to select point to multipoint broadcast this means that dynamically the neighbors will be discovered if we select point to multipoint we must manually add all the neighbors so we'll go with the broadcast approach first and then I will click OK and now let's go to R7 and 8 so this here is R7, routing or FPF, interface templates, and I will add the interface that is facing R3. So in this case, this is Ether1, network type. This is going to be point-to-point -point broadcast. It's important to mention that also we can use point-to-point -point if we only need to establish an adjacency with R3. So let's select ETP now. And let's see what is going to happen. If I go to neighbors, we'll see that adjacency coming up in some seconds. And you can see that this is in a full state. If I go to IP routes, we can see that all those OFPF routes are there and we can pin the remote networks with no problem. So in this case, R3 using point to multipoint broadcast and R7 is using point to point because it's trying to establish an adjacency with R3 only. If I select point to multipoint broadcast and I go to neighbors, and still this is going to work because they have the same network type and you can see that this is showing the full state. So now we can go to IP routes and we still are getting all those OFPF messages. So now let's jump to R8 and we'll do exactly the same process. So this is R8, routing OFPF, interface templates, and I will add one for Ether1. Network type, this is going to be point-to-point -point broadcast, and I will click OK. Now let's see the neighbors. In some seconds, we'll see that information coming up. So you can see that if I'm using point-to-point -point broadcast, this is establishing a full adjacency with R7 and 8. So this is creating a mesh with all those devices. Point to multipoint. We'll have adjacencies in a full mesh style. So that's important to keep in mind. They will be exchanging those LSAs ones with all those neighbors that have a full adjacency. If we are using the broadcast version of point to multipoint, we are going to use the same network type in all the routers and they will establish a full mesh of adjacency between all those devices. That means that the LSA1 will be traveling from one neighbor to the other. Then we have the second version and that is a non-broadcast approach. So in this case, we'll manually add all the neighbors that we want the device to establish a full adjacency with. If we are trying to look for some kind of hub and spoke topology, then we can use the non-broadcast. Let's see how we can jump from the broadcast approach to this new way for configuring point to multipoint networks. So let's go back to the topology. And now, instead of having a full mesh between all those devices, we need to have a point to point connection between R7 and R3 and R8 and R3. 
So let's see how that is gonna look. You can see that there is no DR and BDR, and that is because everything is treated as a point-to-point -point link. So let's go to R3, and now instead of using point-to-multipoint -point broadcast, I'm going to use point-to-multipoint only. I will change that setting in all the devices, and we'll see that we won't get any neighbors because they are expecting that we are gonna manually add that information in every router participating in that network. So if I go now to neighbors, there are no neighbors. Now let's go to R3 and I will add those two neighbors. So this is R3 now, if I check the neighbors, there are no neighbors out of that interface. And from here I will go to static neighbors and I will add R7 and R8. So R7 is using the IP 10.3.0.7 and then we need the percentage and the interface name. In this case that is Ether2. And then we'll add a new entry for R8 also using Ether2. Now we have those two neighbors and if I go to neighbors now we can see this full adjacency coming up. If I go to R7 neighbors, we can see that we have a full adjacency and now we have all the routes in that router. Now let's go to R8 and let's check if the adjacency is up and running. So neighbors, we can see the full adjacency. We can check the routing table. Everything looks good. We are just missing one network type and this is the non-broadcast multi-access. If we are in a special scenario where the link can send multicast messages, then we need to use non-broadcast multi-access. In this case, instead of using the multicast address at the destination for those OFPF packets, they will be using a unicast address. Since the discovery process is not going to be dynamic, we need to manually configure those neighbors and then all the messages will be using the IP that we have added manually. A non-broadcast multi-access is going to elect a DR and BDR. So then the behavior for the election is gonna be similar to the process that we follow in broadcast networks. In which scenarios a non-broadcast multi-access network is recommended? Myrot recommends to use NVMA networks if we are using wireless, for example, because we can have trouble sending those multicast messages or if we have a pretty large broadcast domain, we have a switch with a lot of broadcast traffic. So in that case, it would be better to use a non-broadcast multi-access network or we have some type of point-to-point -point connection, such as some types of VPNs, and we can send multicast traffic over those links, then we're gonna use non-broadcast multi-access. So let's see how we'll configure a non-broadcast multi-access network type in router OS 7. So let's go to the topology and now we have R4 and we have R9. So let's assume that between those two routers we have a link that is not supporting multicast traffic. So I have the type that I mentioned before or maybe this is a wireless connection and we want to avoid potential problems they will use a non-broadcast multi-access network type. So let's go to R4, this guy here, and let's go to routing OSPF and then interface templates. And we'll add a new template for Ether3. And this is gonna be non-broadcast multi-access. And I will click OK. Just by adding that entry as non-broadcast multi-access, this device is not going to be sending hello messages out of Ether3 using a multicast address. We need to manually add the neighbor that we need to establish an adjacency with. So let's go to a static neighbors and we'll add a static neighbor. That is gonna be 10.4.3.2. That the interface configured on Ether3 in R9. And this is gonna be using the interface Ether3. Three. And now we can click OK. 
Remember that this type of network is gonna be using a DR and BBR. So if we want R4 at the DR, we are going to set a higher priority value in this entry. So let's say, for example, 200. Then we can jump to the configuration in R9. So now I'm going to R9. This router has just the IPs configured. There is one IP on ether 3 that is connected to R4. We have the loopback IP, and then we have an IP for this local area network in that device. And then I have an interface that is connected to my office network. That's basically for management purposes. And then we have the OFPF configuration, instances, the area, and on interface templates, I'm just advertising the networks connected to the loopback and ether 2 but those are passive because we are not expecting neighbors out of those interfaces. So we need to add Ether3 as a non-broadcast multi-access. So let's add a new entry, Ether3, network type, non-broadcast multi-access, and now we can click OK. So we can go now to neighbors, and we can see that this is in the init state. And now it's in the full state. If I go to IP routes, we can see that this device is getting all that information coming from R4. If I expand this section here, we can see that the DR is the router 10.4.3.1 and the BDR is R9. There is a DR and BDR in a non-broadcast multi-access network. This is the third video in the channel talking about network types. And now we have gone through every network type in the OSPF configuration in your MyRotic device. I hope that now you are ready to love and then deploy OSPF networks that fit your requirements. Thank you and I see you in the next one.